Hello everybody, many thanks for joining us today. Uh, apologies for the slight delay in starting. Um, you are joining us for the online open day for BA Fine Art at Chelsea uh, College of Arts. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, my name is Misha and I work in the student recruitment team here at Chelsea. Um, so today's event, uh, you're obviously joining us online. So this is an opportunity for you to find out more about the course. Um, this event will be recorded. Uh, you are all muted and we can't see you on your webcam. So you can enjoy uh, this event, event from wherever you are in the world. Um, I'm joined by our panel here today. Um, if you'd like to just quickly introduce yourselves, starting with Mary. Hi everyone, I'm Mary Evans and I'm the BA Fine Art course leader here at Chelsea. Welcome. Hi, I'm Bridget Johnson. I graduated from the BA Fine Art course at Chelsea in 2020. Great, thank you. Um, so Mary will be telling you more about the course and then Bridget will be doing um, a sharing of her experience and then there'll be a short Q&A. So I'm now gonna hand over and Mary will share her screen. Thank you. Thank you. Right, everybody. Um, gosh, show my screen. Just bear with me one second. Uh, my um, presentation seems to be taking its time opening. It is opening, but it's just <laughs> being a bit slow. I won't be a second. So I'm going to, I've got quite a few slides and I'm just going to kind of walk through um, the course, um, showing you some images and some, there will be some, some text kind of um, pay, um, slides as well. Okay, so Chelsea College of Arts, BA Fine Art. This is where we're based. We're based in Millbank, um, and this is the parade ground, which is a kind of big open space that is kind of a semi public space. Lots of people cut through it, lots of people who work next door at Tate cut through it, but we use it on the course quite a bit, especially at end of year shows. And it's a really kind of active space and um, students can kind of book it throughout the year to do presentations and installations and performances and that kind of thing. It's a space that's really kind of at the heart of our course. So we have a, an ethos um, on the course in that um, the, the programme, the fine art programme at Chelsea is underpinned by a philosophy of thinking through making and making things happen. And this uh, it says here this will not change, partly because obviously in the last 18 months there's been lots of change and lots of um, things have been a little bit up and down. But whatever happens, um, thinking through making and making things happen is really at the heart of what we do here at Chelsea. And we're committed to an approach which gives you the, an, op an opportunity to make work and engage in dialogue and discussion about the work that you make and, and the work that your peers make. And this means that you'll you'll make use of online spaces as well as, as studios at Chelsea. In the last um, year, we, we've done quite a lot of things online, but um, and we've kept a few things online, but it is really very much, uh, we are very much kind of here and back on site at Chelsea. Um, so you'll be, so why? Why apply for BA Fine Art? Apply because you'll be encouraged to take risks. You'll be encouraged to experiment, to test your ideas out through new ways of working. You'll be part of a community of artists and you'll explore ideas through making work. You'll have control over what you learn and the pace at which you learn. We're all different as artists, of course, and, um, and also how you might demonstrate what you've learned. The course encourages um, you to take an ethical, inclusive and sustainable approach to working and exhibiting. And the programme is made up of tutorials, seminars, lectures, workshops, exhibitions, live projects, and that will support you in developing your practice and gain an awareness of the discourses particular to. Fine Art at Chelsea is part of the Fine Art programme. It's one of four courses. And this, this slide just shows you where it fits. So the BA Fine Art is, is, is in the programme and the MA Fine Art, the Graduate Diploma, in fine art and MA curating in collections. So that's our community, our fine art community staff. So the, the structure here at um, Chelsea is that each year of the course has a year leader. So Andrew Cheshire is year one leader, Ben Fitton year, year two leader, Elizabeth Peebles is year three leader. The fine art programme director who is kind of has oversees all four courses is Martin Newth and I'm a, a BA course leader. 
this just gives you a, an overview of a typical week. Um, so I'm, it, it's Tuesday today. I mean, I teach in year one, by the way, even though I'm a course leader, I really think it's important for me to, to teach on the course. So I teach in year one because I feel that teaching in year one, I, I kind of get to know the students. So by the time you get through to year three, um, I'll still kind of have a have some kind of connection with you um, and, and kind of watch you progress from year one to year two to year three. So typically on a Monday, most things are online. So each year has a meeting, a year meeting online, generally from 10 o'clock till 11 o'clock. Then it, from 11 o'clock till 12 o'clock, we have artist talks and that's on online, that's on Teams. Um, we've had a really diverse range of artists talking to the students in the last kind of year. And the reason we've kept that online is because during the, the lot, various pandemic and lockdown kind of um, periods, it's been fantastic to be able to just get people from, I've had an artist from Berlin did a talk last year, an artist from Copenhagen did a talk. So some things work well online, you know, you're not necessarily restricted to people who can travel to London and come to the lecture theatre and give an artist talk. So we found that really useful. And lectures are currently online as well. So what happens is a lecture will be uploaded um, onto the, uh, the, the year's team on a Monday. And then on a Friday, at the end of the week, there'll be a post-lecture seminar where the lecture will be unpacked. And the good thing about, and students have said that, that they like that because they got the week to kind of engage with the lecture, think about it and then ask questions and discuss the, the kind of content of the lecture at the end of the week. Generally speaking, Tuesdays and Thursdays are year one teaching days. We do we sometimes do a bit of teaching on a Wednesday morning if we have to, but um, Wednesday afternoons we don't do any teaching. This just shows you a, a quick snapshot of the various practices that the, that the tutors at Chelsea are engaged in. So I hope you can see here that, you know, we've got painters, we've got installation artists, photographers, filmmakers, um, you know, we've got artists, um, tutors who have writing as a practice. So it's very diverse range, which really fits in well with the broad based nature of our course. Every now and then there'll just be an image of a piece of student work, um, such as this, which is in them. Um, the open studio. So we we managed to have a kind of open studios degree show this past June, which was fantastic because the year before the, the degree show was online, but this year we were in the building, which was absolutely fantastic for our students. So we have an event-based curriculum. What does this mean? It means that it's a broad-based and interdisciplinary course. So students aren't split into specialist um, defined um, discipline areas. So we don't have pathways like you might have at CSM or um, courses like you might have at Camberwell, such as painting and sculpture and photography. It's, it's broad, like the staff work and the staff and students work together within a broad context of what fine art practice and research is. And we also um, include strategies of desegregation and decolonization at the heart of the fine art core project at Chelsea. The course gives you confidence to address subjectivity and diversity across inclusive and intersectional narratives. Now, everybody's, everybody has a voice, everybody can be heard. Whatever it is that you want to make work about, it will be accommodated, it will be supported. The course emphasizes, emphasizes self-directed and collaborative learning and teaches fine art as a leadership skill, preparing graduates to be socially and critically engaged in their understanding of the world. This is a really nice um, image from last year from the um, degree show in June, a little um, pink football, <laughs> football pitch. So dialogue through doing, I think I mentioned that at the beginning is one of, a, is un also underpins our ethos and our learning and teaching methods include um, exhibitions, gallery visits, group and individual tutorials, online learning, student presentations, um, independent study, one-to-one -one tutorial support on your dissertation, etc. So lots of various and varied teaching and learning methods. This, this image is the degree show before lockdown, so 2019. I hope you can see how ambitious you get by the time you get to year three when you study at Chelsea. 
you know, students can think big, they can think about space, they can, uh, this is a, these, the three students work here. So, you know, they think about collaboration, they think about curating the degree show together, what's going to go next to what. Process over product is an interesting one because we, it's not necessarily all about final outcomes or the product the process and the journey and the experimentation are valued and are important so you can expect each year at chelsea to have its own particular emphasis students development over the three years ranges from a more tutor-led experience in the first year that's where um literally we just you know i think we're in week three um to more to a more self-directed rigorous individual investigation in the final year towards a degree show and peer learning and mentoring run parallel to the course activities in order to bring a strong learning and course-wide community the progressively independent course is designed to develop students sense of a strong practice and puts them in an excellent position to make the most of post um, the most of opportunities as artists in a future profession or postgraduate education these are the first year studios from, oh, not last year, the year before. I mean, they look pretty much like that now. So pre-coronavirus, our studios were a central learning resource around which your making, dialogue with peers and engagement with each other's work took place. Because of the need to maintain social distance, physical studio space will not be able to be used in the same way. So we are unable to assign flexible individual or work or group workspaces however we are committed to maintaining the ability to make and discuss work at college with the following structure in which the following structure is designed to address i'll show you this, that, that in a second um our students are back um, most of our students are back we're in the studios we we are maintaining social distancing we're wearing masks um, when we're all together in studios we're having a, the, the windows open we will obviously be guided by um, government um, guidelines but as much as possible we are in the building assessment which is something that everybody wants to know is um, your work is assessed holistically we, and that means that each piece of assessment evidence um, doesn't receive a, a, a separate grade. Your, the, your mark is for the unit and it's an, an evaluation of all the assessment evidence considered together. So it means that you, this means that you can demonstrate how you've achieved the unit learning outcomes through a range of submissions, allowing your own individual strengths to be developed and evidence in the areas which are most appropriate for you. So it might be that you know, you might be particularly strong at writing um, and, and maybe less so at something else, um, maybe experimenting. So, but you're not going to get penalized. So you'll, you'll be able to show what your strengths are because your um, assessment outcomes are assessed as a whole rather than, you know, individually. I must say that in the last 18 months in year one, we have, um, we reverted to just having a pass fail um, for assessments for each unit. Um, that's not going to be the case going forward now. Um, unit one is pass fail, but the other units are graded. And it was a it was just considered to be a good thing to do so that with, with the issues that um, are um, that everyone's had over the past year, worrying about a grade, we didn't want worrying about a grade to be one of them, so they were just pass fail. Um, we use dialogic modes of assessment, and that means that you and your tutor that's assessing you will discuss what grade you will receive, allowing you to contribute to the process of deciding an appropriate grade. And in this way, assessment is an important point of reflection and functions as a moment when you can track your, track your development and get advice on how to progress, um, how pro progress can be made in the future. This is really interesting because you might think if you're having a discussion with your tutor about your grade that you're automatically going to say, oh, I think I should get an A. It actually doesn't work like that. I think that when you talk to your tutor about what you might get as a grade and your progress, it, you can be, it, it's, it allows you to be quite honest about what you think you've done, how you think you've done and how you think you've progressed. As well as summative assessment, which is an assessment at the end of the unit, formative assessment is an important tool, which is formative assessment is very much about ongoing feedback. And it's an opportunity for you to discuss and reflect on how your work might be developed. 
And then I think I've already mentioned that we have assessment tutorials where you talk with your tutor about your grade. This is um, also from last, um, from June studios. Collaboration is something that is quite big on this course, um, partly in year one, and, and, but more focused in year two. And, I, and by year three, if you want to collaborate with another student, you know, with, as, you're, you know, as you're getting towards the end of your degree, you're encouraged to, but you're, you're not absolutely required to. So in year two, um, unit six um, introduces you to different ways in which collaborative working can focus and enhance your own creative strengths. The ability to collaborate with others, create networks and develop and contribute to communities of practice is the emphasis of this unit. And it's really important. So we, we, we say that our course is event based and it's because we focus on trying to um, engage you in the kinds of processes that artists in the real world are engaged in and a collaboration is most definitely one of them. So through research and practice, you'll develop an understanding of how collaborative practices can inform your own individual practice. And you'll be supported and encouraged to engage with fellow students with different practices and interests, um, to engage with external audiences and to develop your own creative attributes to enable you to take on future challenges in a variety of contexts. Exhibitions play a really key role here at Chelsea. And we use, like I said at the beginning, we use the parade ground, we use um, off-site and online spaces, um, we use the studios, we have off-site shows where students go out into London and find places to exhibit, and we have end-of-year shows as well. So always trying to get you to show your work, to have quits about your work, to talk about your work, Last year we had online um, kind of studios. This is just show you a kind of example of them. We use Padlet, and I don't know if any of you are familiar with Padlet. We used it a lot last year. We're using it much less this year, but it, we found that it was quite a useful tool to use Padlet. Um, so we are using it a little bit in year one at the moment. So this is just an example of a couple of online um, exhibitions. Obviously, an online exhibition isn't the same as, as uh, exhibiting in real life. This is a big wall painting from the degree show last year. It's quite cool. It's a corner shop. This is a performance in the parade ground in 2019. Shows you how, how much we use and value that, that space. I like these images because it really shows you how how ambitious you get by the time you get to year three in your work and the scope and the scale, the ideas and the research, things all kind of come together into these shows. And you can also see, hopefully, in these images, how diverse students work is, you know, there's painting, there's installation, there's projections. This piece on the left is made out of a carpet, you know, craft, knitting, which I know has been really big over the past year during the pandemic. Theory, um, the course places great importance on the integration of practice and theory and the need for informed and objective awareness of the external context and conditions which shape or frame contemporary art practice. And this grounding assists you in the development of a progressively professional mode of thinking and making. So in each year of the course, you are required to engage in theory. So in year one, um, in unit three, there's an essay. In year two, there is an essay and also a theory presentation. And then of course, in, unit, in year three, there's um, a kind of dissertation or extended essay to write. Just showing you very briefly some of the um, lectures that we had online um, in the last couple of years, painting, materiality of images. This is an artist talk that was online, lecture, oh, painting part two. So quite diverse. This is um, when we were doing, this is uh, when we started the artist talks. So that's me in my living room. Um, with an artist, um, oh gosh, 
feel really bad because I can't remember his name, sorry. And then we have a stream where we collect and collate all those the talks. They're all recorded. So if you miss it, you can go onto the, the courses stream, uh, Microsoft stream and, and have a look. So there are workshop facilities, as you might expect, metal foundry, wood, ceramics, etc. Let's see here. So just a little bit of key information, just a little bit of a summary, really. We have uh, we have a we've had a blended approach and we still have a slightly blended approach, I suppose. So there are on site quits and tutorials, online year meetings, online talks, artist talks, off site exhibitions, on site open studios, online on site and streamed lectures, on site studios, on site maker spaces. So it's a bit of a mixture. Um, this is a, a, a glossary just to, it, we've only found it really necessary to use a glossary like this in the last year or so because of the various different terms that um, make up on-site, online, blended learning. So for instance, synchronous is um, online or face-to-face -face learning that happens in real time where the tutor is present at the same time as you. So this could be in a seminar, it could be in a discussion, it could be in a tutorial in the studio. Asynchronous means content and activities that you engage with at your own pace. For example, the lectures, they're uploaded on a Monday, you asynchronously engage with them over a few days, and then there's, a, there's an online kind of seminar at the end of the week. And then blended is um, teaching and learning that includes a combination of online and real life and face-to-face -face contact with staff. Independent study time is when you work on your own or in groups and it's an essential part of your course. We don't give, we have units that are structured and we give unit briefs, but we don't really give project briefs. You know, we're not ever, ever going to tell you what to do. And I hope that um, when Bridget speaks to you in a minute, she can kind of attest to that and, and attest to how, how you will, you might not think it at the beginning, but you will become independent as a learner. There's a tradition at the end of every year to take a photograph of the year three cohort. So the last time we were able to do it properly in real life was 2019. So this is the year of 2019, the graduating group. And then the last couple of years, we've had to do it like this, which is obviously not quite the same, but we still did it. So what are we looking for? Um, we are looking for evidence of visual and conceptive creative ability. We're looking for the potential to, for you to develop the practical, um, expressive, critical and conceptual skills necessary to complete the course, an awareness of contemporary and historical fine art contexts, an ability to communicate and discuss your ideas visually, verbally and in writing, ability to manage your time well, and evidence of an ability to generate and develop ideas through making work little bit of portfolio advice, recent work, which could include drawings, paintings, sculptures, photos, clear documentation of work that is really large. This was actually written um, more, is more connected to when we had um, interviews here on site. I think that the interviews are actually going to be, they were online this year and there will be next year as well. A concise portfolio that shows a selective approach. This is really important, self-initiated as well as project work, because a lot of um, applicants may have come from school or foundation where they may have been set work. And like I said a few minutes ago, we won't ever set you a project or work to do. So in your portfolio, we want to see what you would do if you weren't set anything. So what is it? So that shows us what you what you're really passionate about and you can you can um, include animation and film and video etc we have some kind of parallel opportunities on the course such as um creative computing diploma diploma in professional studies which is that is a year between year two and year three where students can apply to take that year out to get um kind of industry experience in a way so you could do an internship or something like that and we also have study abroad exchanges which at the moment are continuing as far as we know until 2023 because um 
they haven't yet been affected by Brexit. And then after that, we will have to see. But that's run by a different department. It's not run by the course itself. So some industry engagement that you can be involved in are talks and workshops and professional development. We have a really good professional development strand that, run, that runs across year two and year three, where we invite people such as curators, artists, uh, people who run museums, people who run kind of fabricator workshops, artists to come and talk to students about what they might do as their next steps. Um, we've had some quite well-known kind of graduates at Chelsea. Um, the college alumni include Turner Prize winners and nominees, people like Marika Mori, Chris Othili, Rana Begum, Mike Nelson. And our graduates leave with the ability to make things happen, showcase their abilities and accomplishments to others, and with life-wide and lifelong learning. That's one of our students who's just graduated. Okay, I think that's me, and I'm going to go over to you, Bridget. Thank you. Um, okay, so I might be repeating some of the stuff Mary said, but it's just for emphasis because I think it's really great as well. <laughs> um, my name is Bridget, as I said before, and I graduated from the BA Fine Art course at Chelsea in June of 2020. And since then, I worked at Chelsea for a year as a fine art studio fellow, assisting the fine art programme. So after finishing my art foundation, I decided to move to London and study at Chelsea on the fine art BA. One of the elements that drew me to Chelsea the most was that the course doesn't require you to specialise into any specific pathway or medium, like a lot of art schools do, particularly in London. The course is organised in such a way that your artistic practice can develop without compromise. On the course, you don't, need, you don't work to project briefs, which means you have complete control over medium and can bring whatever subject matter you desire to the work without being limited by a brief or prescribed idea. Chelsea is also home to the largest fine art library in all of UAL, which was really valuable to me due to my practice being heavily research-based. Um, these are a couple pictures from the studios when I was at Chelsea in the third year. I think these might still be the third year studios, yeah. Um, I really loved the atmosphere that the studios at Chelsea provided and also really enjoyed the vast variety of sem seminars, theory lectures and theory lectures put on each year and really, really thrived on the highly critical discussion with tutors and peers and visiting practitioners in the regular tutorials and crits. Chelsea also, um, yeah, visiting practitioners is something Chelsea does when uh, sometimes after you've had an exhibition or an assessment, they'll bring in artists um, from outside of the university that don't normally teach there to come and do a crit or a tutorial with you so you can get another perspective. Um, you can also be involved in what artists they bring in and like ask for recommendations. Obviously, if you think a bit too big, they might not be able to come, but um, we've been able to have people that my year recommended and it was really, really useful to get that um, other perspective. Um, there are ample opportunities to show work and uh, through exhibitions whilst on the course, both on-site and off-site at Chelsea. Um, during my time studying, I took part in eight exhibitions on the course. Um, these are a couple posters that someone in my year, Charlotte Brokart, made. Um, it was a really good opportunity to start working collaboratively, not just in a way of making work together, but actually organising things, which is really useful for after you leave when you kind of have to do a lot of self-starting. Um, after I finished my dissertation, my theory tutor recommended, oh, this is actually pictures from these exhibitions. I shared that in the last slide. Um, I did like a performance piece for that one, so I'm sitting on the floor. But um, the, I think really the main thing that is great about Chelsea is that you don't have to specialise. And that means that you're working with people who are doing so many different things that maybe you might not even have thought of. And then when you have crits with these people, you're able to talk to people about work that 
you might not even be interested in, but it can really inform your own practice and just widen the lens a lot. Um, so after finishing my dissertation, my theory tutor recommended that I take part in the Climate Crisis Speculative Futures Late event that was taking proposals from Chelsea College of Arts students and would take place at the Horniman Museum and Gardens in South London. I was selected to be a part of the event along with 17 other students. Chelsea offers lots of opportunities like this each year. I think last year they did something with Tate um, and it's a really good opportunity for you to be able to put something on your artist CV and gain experience working with other institutions and in a different environment of ex exhibiting. Um, the structure and self-led aspects of the course really mean that collaboration is encouraged. Because of this, the connections that I have made over my time at Chelsea have allowed me to continue working on my practice post-graduation, even during these turbulent times. So these are a few um, pictures of the third year studios before we went into lockdown and had the last bit online. But it really was a really, really good time in my life and has helped me so much in being able to stay in London after I graduated and just having a really good community of people that I met there to carry on making and talking about work with. Thank you.